So last year I described a problem uh, at this conference. I didn't give any solutions, I just described it. Uh, the, the problem is probably easiest to see if we think about updating a particular piece of software, which I, I do all the time, and this happens to me all the time, where the UI gets worse, it gets buggy, features that I relied on go away, uh, new features that I didn't want show up, and they clutter up the screen. My access to my data becomes more difficult, it, it's moderated in some way that I, I don't appreciate. And in general, my process for dealing with that data, for, for my workflow, the way that I use the software is modified in a way that makes it worse for me. And so this, this problem is that the software that we create and, and ship as apps is inhumane. And, and the reason for that is partially because you know, all of our primitives for building that software are designed around giving us the ability to tell the computer what we want it to do and how we want it to do it. So we have things like functions and namespaces and modules and libraries and APIs. And those are all great for describing to a machine what you want it to do and how you want it to do it, but they have nothing at all to do with how users are going to actually use your software, how people are going to interact with it and the process that they want to use. So, you know, in particular, if we look at modern API design, this is antithetical to expressing the process that you want people to be able to use there. It is inherently inhumane. Now, that, that's a huge statement, right? But, what, but if, if we think about that, you know, a good API is designed to provide the minimal possible surface area for interaction, right? It squeezes down everything into the atomic orthogonal commands and, and basically, I get to see my data through these tiny windows, and I get to interact with it through these tiny windows, and that's all I get. And, and there's a very good reason for that, actually, that, that we have to put up these walls around the data, uh, and that, that I only get to interact with it through these tiny little slots in those walls. And, and the reason is that our data is weak and easily corrupted. And so not only could I accidentally do something that ruins the integrity of my data or violates some kind of guarantee that the app you know, wants or needs to maintain. But also, if a malicious entity gets in there, they can do all kinds of terrible things, right? So they could you know, leak my data, they could corrupt my data, uh, you know, they could do ransomware, like, or worse, right? There's all kinds of bad stuff that a malicious entity can do if they get in there and get access to the data. So, you know, this puts us in a really bad situation because now, in order to make any kind of app at all that isn't actually terrible and harmful, we have to be, you know, best of breed at security and privacy and infrastructure and fault tolerance and all of these other things that, that most of us are not best of breed at, right? We want to make applications that are useful and interesting and, and that, you know, and that give people something that they can work with, tools that they can use. But instead, in this, in this situation, your app is only as good as your castle walls are thick. That's a bad place to be. And, and it's bad for both reasons. It makes your app more inhumane by providing less data access and being more restrictive. And it also raises the barrier to entry massively because to make an app that isn't explicitly terrible and harmful, you have to do all of these things perfectly. So that was the problem that I mentioned, maybe slightly a slightly different viewpoint on it now. I, I want to describe a solution, or, or a sketch of a solution. And in, in kind of the tradition of magical realists, I, I want to grant us a magical thing. So here's my wish. I wish we had a, a magical data container that could preserve the integrity of its data as it moves across system boundaries. So by integrity, I, I really just mean, you know, if, if I had one of these and I gave it to you, you could tell that the data inside it hasn't been changed, right? It's consistent, that it uh, that nothing has been removed, so it's complete. Nothing has been taken out of it that should be there, and it's unique. Now, note that you know consistency and completeness are easy. Uh, 
uniqueness is, is where the magic comes in. Okay, so I, I give you this thing, and now you have it, and I don't have it anymore, so I can't give it to someone else, because I don't have it. I, I can still you know, give them a Polaroid of that, but I can't give them the thing. I can't give them the thing itself, because there's only this one unique version of it. Okay, so let's suppose I have this magical uh, container that preserves integrity across system boundaries. How, how does that help us? How does this change the dynamic that I've described and, and the fundamental inhumanity of our software? Well, uh, let's compare these two. So, you know, I in in a in an app today, I, I walk up to that that application and I knock on the door, and you know, some grumpy guy opens a slot and says, "What's the password?" So then, you know, I, I say, I tell them my username and my password. So, okay, fine. And of course, it's a slide. But, but now at least I've established my bona fides, right? So I knock on the door again and say, what do you want? And so I, I say, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see this piece of data that I that I own. So, so, all right, fine. It holds up the piece of data for me, right? Now I can see it through, through this little window. And say, okay, yeah, that is what I'm interested in. And it closes the slide again. So, right? Ah, and he says, what do you want now? And I said, oh, well, you know, if you wouldn't mind, could you change the, this part of the data to this other thing, please? It's all right, fine. And he closes it. Well, I, okay, but I don't know if it's changed, so I knock again and he says, what do you want? And I said, oh, could you show me that again? I, I'm going to make sure that it was actually changed. So he holds it up, and now I can see it. And I say, all right, thanks, thanks. And I, and I walk on to the next castle. Right? That's an up to that. It's not a very delightful experience. Contrast that with my interaction if I had one of these files, one of these magical files, or uh, well, you know, many of them. Let's say if we had this magical data container, I, I could walk into a shop, and you know, as I go in, I could show my ID to to the bouncer outside and say, you know, I, I'm allowed to come in. And I go in, and I take out my document, and I say, Hello, could you? Uh, could you read this over, make sure everything is correct, and then stamp it and sign it for me? And you know, so the guy takes so it. He's so grumpy. He says, OK, I'm sure. And he reads it over and makes sure everything is there and it's all correct. And he stamps it and he signs it and he gives it back to me. Right? So now I take it and I walk to the next shop and I repeat the same transaction. But this is radically different. Right? This is more like a city than a bunch of castles on hills. I take my data with me. I take my ID you know, or, or capability tokens, right? I said ID, but really these, these are just capabilities that let me access different resources and go in different places. I take my documents with me, my important things, so that instead of having my stuff spread out among 10,000, you know, in, terrible applications where I can't access my data and I can't use my process, I can't do the things that I want to do with my data my way, and they're poorly defended, so anybody else can get in there and get my data. Instead, I can choose, for instance, three or four places that I do trust. And where I trust the, their security, I can put my data there. But even more importantly, I can take it back out and put it somewhere else, right? But that's just about the information storage. The interesting thing here is that I can use that however I like. I can apply my process to these things, and everything that I do still has its integrity maintained. So if I go and get this stamped and signed, that stamp and signature is part of the context of that data. And the integrity of all of that is maintained. So the app can still maintain its guarantees that it needs to maintain, but I get to use my process. So this actually allows us to turn our, you know, your standard CRUD application inside out. And what it means is that that the database rows that are relevant to me are now mine. They are outside of that system. It doesn't need to maintain them. I get those. And that means that you know, the 99% of the work that you have to do to build an app today that has nothing to do with your business value, it has nothing to do with adding value, you don't have to do that. Right? You don't have to worry about the security and the privacy and the infrastructure if you don't own any of the data. If instead, you give that back to your users and you let them make the choices about what they want to do with their data, how they want to treat their things, where they want to store them, the process that they want to use on them, 
that completely changes the dynamics of building an application. So today, your app is like a castle. A, a poorly, probably poorly defended castle, an absolutely inhumane castle in that it doesn't give your users the ability to express their process, to customize it and control it. If we had a world where these magical files existed, where we could turn our apps inside out, we could get rid of your database. We could get rid of the headache of that 99% of the work that you're not an expert in and you really shouldn't be doing. We could just focus on the business of it. Pure app goodness. This one small bit of magic gives us the ability to let the people who are using our app control their own data, control their own process. Take what they need and put it where they want it to be, and do what they need to do with it. We can build cities instead of castles. And that's a world that I would like to